Hi everyone. I, I just want to acknowledge the last project. I thought it was really cool because I actually worked the same mentor last year, and I, I don't know if any of you remember, but I programmed my own robot with Dr. Xiao at and um, QE. So just uh, good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well this year I'm actually working on a computerizing program as well. However, it's to understand chemokine co-receptors uh, through crystallization of proteins. And this year I'm working at the New York University Medical Center, Cardozo Lab, with my co-mentor Alpna Agrawal, as well as my boss, Timothy Cardozo. So before I begin talking, was that too quick? Cellular molecules to the cells, such as antigens and cytokines. Uh, when HIV enters the body, it utilizes either chemokine core receptor CCR5 or chemokine core receptor CX, CR4, in order to gain entry into our host cells. This is just a little bit of background information for you guys. And um, the cell type that immunodeficiency virus infects and replicates in is called CD4. This cell is a type of cell that HIV needs to replicate in and then transfer its genetic material. So as you guys can see, on um, I'll just use the mouse to point it out. On um, this diagram, what we have is this is the CD4 cell, and those are the HIV molecules which are targeting and utilizing it in order to transfer their genetic material. So before I begin talking about ICM and computerized program, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about GP120, which is a glycoprotein exposed on the surface of HIV envelopes. GP120 just basically plays a vital role in seeking out receptors for entry, because when HIV infects any target cell with the CD4 receptor, which was in the diagram I just showed you, particularly uh, helper T cells, it binds to that GP120 glycoprotein receptor. So tropism refers to the way in which different viruses and pathogens have evolved to target host species. These are just some vocabulary words or terms that you guys just should be familiar with. My mentor and I are trying to study the chemokine co-receptors and their chemical structure and the way in which amino acids function within the cellular structure of CD4. In order to understand these structures, we use ICM to visualize visualize them. Oh. Oh. So you guys have to cut it out. That's really disrespectful and distracting. I apologize. This is an image of synaptic which is a synaptic vesicle and plasma membrane, which is important for docking infusion. This is what the amino acid looks like through ICM programming. And these are basically the four helices, which my mentor and I are trying to identify and learn more information about through ICM. As you can see, they're all sort of color coordinated because we try to uh, put different colors for them, that way we can identify which one it is. At work through ICM, we analyze the biological structure and sequence, and we try to extract the code of each of the helices. However, ICM is also used for other things, such as math plots and statistics and sequences and so forth. The toluene toxin. This is basically Botox. We've all heard of Botox, right? But most of us are just aware of the cosmetic application for it. But actually, if it's used in anemic amounts, it can actually be used for other applications as well such as uh, studying uh, HIV, anti-HIV strategies, what my mentor and I are working on. It's basically, you know, used in minute doses to treat painful mus muscle, muscle spasms and as a cosmetic treatment. Now, I'm sure many of you biology specialists out there are aware of the 20 standard amino acids, but what we have here is on the 
bottom left corner is proline, which is the main amino acid that my mentor is focusing on analyzing. And what's special about proline, proline is its chemical structure. As you can see, it's different from the rest of them because it's sort of like a circle. It begins at carbon and ends at carbon. So that's what makes it unique on like, the rest of the amino acids. So overall, by studying the structure of synaphrodrevin, which is also SNAP25, and the way it interacts and transmits material in the CD4 cell, we can try to use the proline amino acid to block or prevent certain, uh, certain parts of SNAP25 from communicating or transmitting uh, syn uh, neurons and syntaxin. So this is just sort of a design or something that I created for you guys to get a better idea and to portray what we're doing. And this is SNAP25. These are the four helices, the amino acids that my mentor and I are working in extracting their genetic material. And this is where, well, the protein amino acid and where my mentor is thinking about placing it in order to prevent it from uh, transmitting some of its information from the synaptic vesicle, vesicle to the CA2 channel. This is just an image which displays what ICM looks like. And on the bottom over here, what you see is the command line or the script. So like I was saying before, I'm also working with a computerized program uh, used to extract codes and the genes from different uh, molecules. And what we have here is a command line. And I'm basically getting experience in how to write these commands in the script right now. I've been working on it for just a few weeks, and I'm actually making progress. So. You can either use the buttons on the program or you can just write the command line. Most people or professionalists just use the command line script just to type it in, or other people just like using the buttons. So it just depends whatever you're most comfortable with. Now the particular part of the project that I'm focusing on is extracting alignments. So I'm using ICM for a generation of multiple sequence alignments, which exists between the PLCs that I'm working on from Synaptography. And so, like I said before, small doses of Botox have been found useful in utilizing uh, GP120 lighter proteins. There's also other treatments that Botox is used for, which I'm sure many of you have heard of. This isn't really that important, not many of you should copy it, because it doesn't really have anything to do with uh, synaptography, but that's basically it. For my future goals, I hope to continue working with my mentor, Timothy Cardozo, and assist him, assist him in utilizing uh, the glycoprotein GP120 and determine the full crystal structure of chemokine co-receptors CCR5 and CXCR4 for the use of ICM programming. I would like to acknowledge my mentor, Timothy Cardozo, Alpina Agarwal, New York University Medical Center, Dr. Sack, Shubi, thank you, and you guys. Any questions? I want to continue working on determining the crystal structure of chemokine co-receptors CCR5 and CXCR4 through the use of ICM programming. Take place. 